Hello friends, we're here today in Revelation chapter 19. So what's happening here in the beginning is a multitude in heaven is basically cheering for God. They're saying great is God because he has, you know, brought down the great prostitute. Now, I think this is interesting. The great prostitute has been brought down and it has been thrown in the fire and and its smoke will go up forever and ever. What I think is interesting about this is that, you know, when you talk to people today, they don't understand the justice of hell. You know, they, they don't understand how a good God can do something like this. But there's so much we don't know. There's so much we don't understand. And yet, when it actually happens, when you have all the, all the knowledge and you see how just God is, and how great he is and how he is how he is dealing with such evil you know when when you see that happen for real <laughs> you're gonna cheer you're gonna say this is just and this is good the next thing that happens here is that John is supposed to write down that blessed are all the people who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is not exactly the marriage supper of the Lamb yet. This is an invitation. And John is overwhelmed and he starts to cry and he starts to worship the angel that told him this. Now this is just such a, a great moment because, because he's realizing that there is hope. You know, there's been so much judgment in this book so far, but right here he's saying, you and all of the things that you've been through in your life and in this vision and, and all of Christianity is all going to be made right. And he's brought down to his knees and he's worshiping this angel and this angel saying, don't do that. Don't worship me. <laughs> worship Jesus. I'm just a servant like you. And then Jesus starts to come down. This is such a glorious moment. You know, for some reason, this reminds me of Avengers Endgame, where in the end, you know, they say, look over your right, and then all the armies of Wakanda come, and all the Avengers are there, and it's just such a glorious moment. And this is a moment like that. You know, I'm a firm believer that God puts these things in our heart. He knows what's going to move us. And that was a, that was a good movie. But this is for real. <laughs> So Jesus comes down. What's interesting to me about this part is the names. Basically, he's saying, all, giving all these names to Jesus. And he's describing them. You know, his eyes are like fire. He's got a sword coming out of his mouth. He's on a, a white horse. But the names, he says his name is Faithful and True. You know, he's, he calls him the rider there. The rider is called Faithful and True. And then he says he also has a name that he alone knows. I believe this speaks to the fact that, that Jesus, Jesus is God and, and God is mysterious. You know, there's things that we don't know about him because he's so much higher than us. But not only that, that he does not answer to anybody but himself. You know, nobody can call him by his true name and ask him to do something because he alone knows his name. It, it speaks to it speaks to his power. But then it says, you know, the, the world will give him this name, the Word of God. Now, John, in the beginning of the Gospel of John, talks about this. And then if you read 1 John, he talks about this also. This is John's favorite name for Jesus. The Word of God, and I talked about it before, I'll just mention it here. The Word of God is actually the word Logos, and it means it's the purpose, the purpose for life, the purpose for creation, a purpose for everything. And it was something that the Greeks would often discuss. They would try to figure out what's the purpose, what's the reason? And so John says this is this is the purpose for life. This is the purpose for creation. This is the purpose for everything. This is the Logos. He is the Word of God. He's the Word of life. Next, it says that 
He's got a name written on his robe and on his thigh. I have a friend who said that this was her favorite verse because it shows that Jesus had a thigh tattoo. It doesn't really say it's a tattoo, but it says that he has written on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So it's clear it's talking about Jesus here, yet he's got all these names, you know, different ways of symbolizing who he is and what he is. And he's coming down and then he speaks to the birds and he's basically saying, feast away. <laughs> As if to say, you know, the, all, of the, all of the evil, all of the evil people of the world have, have, have been killed and all the birds can eat their flesh. But what I love about this chapter is the invitation you know, the invitation to the, to the wedding supper. But we're going to uh, see more about this. You know, uh, an old wedding that would happen back in the first century was a different affair from what we had today. And so we, we will see different aspects of that play out in the rest of this book. But this is a great chapter. This is Revelation chapter 19. Have a great day. Bye.